Pile it up this drive. Second down, Palmer, eluding the pressure right. Now on the run, he'll throw it back deep. That's caught inside the 20. And he is down deep into Seattle territory. Well, go ahead and throw the ball, man. You got the big lead, you got the clock on your side. Obviously, they don't care much about the feelings of the other team, do they? Well, I was gonna say, you better run to the locker room pretty quick after this one. Well, right now, maybe. They're just looking at it from the fantasy perspective. More points for everyone if they win big. Over the middle here to Brown. That throw good for four. It's second down. What terrifies defense is when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. Now Palmer to throw on second down. His throw incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. And ready for third and six. Third down, Palmer. And this is going to be incomplete. The tight end, Jermaine Gresham, the intended receiver. And now it's fourth down. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. Fairly short kick, taken at the 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious. The pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Brandon Williams in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. They're going to hurry back to the line now. On second down, Wilson, Baldwin with it, over the middle, the 40, the 20, and he's across for the touchdown, too little, too late, but he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning, you just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man, and nothing too crazy there, a quick slant, and then he just had a seam, he found a seam. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes it and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone. And the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Ball was out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was gone. Now to send this one away following the score. Short kick here. Fielded about the 17. Now a hit and a loose football. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field. Punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. 
throwing is Wilson. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he showcased the spin, but couldn't do much else as he's wrangled down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. To throw is Wilson, and that's Curse for the Seattle touchdown, hauling it in. Jermaine Curse, a two-yard touchdown grab, and the Seahawks are able to close the gap just a bit. So they're going to go for two. Wilson going to throw for it. And no, it falls incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion, but still, as a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do, and, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm, I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Yeah, that's true. You've said that before. Now it's Ellington to return. So out now come the Cardinals. They have the big cushion here in the final stages of this one. I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it very convincingly. And now the final moments of this one. Palmer apparently wants to throw it. They had the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. All right, Charles, help me out here. Fourth quarter, you've got the lead, and you run backwards into the end zone. You're just trying to do too much. I almost don't have words for it. But you know, every coach that we talk to talks about running backs or people running the football, running north-south, getting upfield. He went way in the opposite direction. And that's going to cost his team. Yeah, it cost him big time. Still leading, but it costs him. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching? Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. That is caught at the seven. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. In the red zone this time. Hey, got tight left. Watch tight end. Watch tight end. On the ground, Rawls. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Again, it's Rawls. And the avenue collapsed for him as he's going to be held up short of the goal line. And now here's a timeout defensively coming from the Cardinals. 
It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. to the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with the clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope, but they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Now the Seahawks face a big two-point conversion attempt. Wilson again to Rawls. And they will get back to it in one score as he is into the end zone and the lead's cut to eight here in the fourth. And now we've got a one-score game and at least a little light at the end of the tunnel. Is that what we call a glimmer of hope? Glimmer of hope. Because they've got to get an onside kick and then find their way into the end zone before time expires? Glimmer or what's less than a glimmer? I don't know. You, you're the one that knows all the big words. <laughs> uh, a sparkle? A sparkle. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's what we're going with. And it's a short kick taken right around the 19. And not a particularly good return here as they'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. And the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. Charles, this is not an easy place to win. They are known for having such a great crowd. But how about that? They came in here. They were determined from the opening kick, and they got it done. And they've done such a great job at putting an excellent team on the field. But the architects that built this stadium to keep the noise in, and that crowd responds in a big way. But you're exactly right. Hard to believe that people can still come in here and win the game. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Seattle, so long, everybody.